Hey everybody, I'm Gary McLean and you are watching Talent Talk. As always, uh, if you haven't done so already, please do go to the Talent Talk YouTube channel and subscribe today. As always, your support's appreciated. And just another reminder as well that this episode and other previous season four episodes are now available on podcast mediums such as Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, just to name a few. Uh, if you'd like a full list of where you can actually listen to the show, uh, have a look at the description details of this episode and previous season four episodes. Now, currently we don't have seasons one to three, but we are looking to get those up there ASAP. So stay tuned for that as well. Now, today's guest is an Edmonton actor and voice actor. Uh, she was actually supposed to be on a, an earlier season in season four, or earlier episode in season four. Uh, but due to unfortunate events, we had to postpone that session. Um, honestly, I think it worked out for the best, but because now we can chat about one of her more recent endeavors, um, a project that's garnered a worldwide recognition of success, the little Edmonton film that could skin him a rink. Love it or not, uh, the success of the film is undeniable. Um, it had a budget of about $15,000 and has garnered over a million dollars in box office revenue across hundreds of different theaters. Now, Skinner Inc. is just the tip of the iceberg in a career that has taken off in a very short period of time. And I'm very excited to finally get the chance to sit down with Jamie Hill. So let's get started and find out more about this talent of the future. Jamie, there you are. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. Nice to finally sit down with you. Right? It's been <laughs> a long time in the making, if you I will. was so busy in the fall. I was just so busy. Now I'm finally able to stay home and not, uh, I do my marketing at home. I don't have to run around and be a PA in the winter. I just, I stay home. Yes. <laughs> Lovely Alberta. Edmonton is uh, cold. You guys get Chinooks. We don't. Not so much. No, definitely not as often as we do. Yeah. Which, you know, for the migraine people out there, that it's not a bad thing sometimes. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people here that get migraines. As soon as that Chinook rolls in, and oh, they have a heck of a time. Um, yeah. No, welcome to the show, finally. Um, I kind of like to get it started because you do a lot, for one thing. We'll get that right on the table that you you're an actor, voice actor, you do PA, um, you do a bunch of things, you're great at marketing people, including yourself. Um, but you. when did you actually get going into this and, and why? Film, that is. Well, the beginning, the beginning started in Vancouver when I was 15. Really before okay. that. Before that, we went to uh, Charles Stewart, and I was an extra in Stay Tuned with John Ritter and Pam Dauber in Vancouver. Uh, it was the best experience ever, and I knew I wanted to do something in the film because I had so much fun doing the sound and, you know, clapping and hooting and hollering because I was in the scene with the wrestling rink. So we pretended to yell, and, you know, as a young, I, I was a, a, a tween, I, I loved it. So I was really lucky to do that. And then in grade nine, my school that we moved into in Burnaby South, it was a school with a, also with a, the school of the deaf. So we actually had like, we learned sign language as another language. It was the best thing. Uh, going into acting, knowing sign language in Vancouver was great. So I, I started lessons, you know, I got pictures, I got... Um, I just took that when I was 15, it was about a year and then I moved to the Kootenays. So there was no more acting. So that ended in 93. Okay. Now let's fast forward about eight years ago. I figured I'm going to do this again. My kids are growing up, you know, they're, <laughs> they're self-sufficient and, but five years ago, it really started blowing up. I started networking. I was introduced to a couple different uh, camera people and directors and it was it was a blast. It, Facebook really had a lot to do with it. I just looked up different groups for Edmonton, just started talking to people, hanging out with them if I could and being on set. So that's the best part. Uh, 
about five years ago, I went on set for the first time and I met a lot of people. I was on, oh, it was probably 96, nine, or 96, 2016. So that's probably six years now. So yeah. it's been a little bit of everything. COVID happened, so I slowed down. I went into the voiceover. I right. figured, well, what else can I do that's getting my voice out there? Because uh, it doesn't sound like everybody else's. Uh, the Halloween came around, and I went to a haunted house that gave money to the uh, SCARS, which is the animal rescue up here in Edmonton, and to the food bank. I, that's who I support. I always have. Food bank money walked over there went through the haunt loved the haunt realized i wanted to be a haunt actor and walked up to preston and and hugh and tress and asked them if i could be a character and they asked me what i could do and i could cackle like a witch and it's very loud so i did that for three four years now we actually had our last haunt this year i was a little girl if you're seeing any pictures, this, you'll see uh, um, Sean Gordon is a clown, and he and I are playing around in the the lineups, the long lineups we had. It was such a success. We helped over ten thousand dollars worth of food bank. Nice. It was amazing. I'm sad to see it go, but you know, I'm evolving my characters. I have enough experience helping all the Nate students out here all the indie films that I've got clips and learned different skills from different workshops and classes, a lot of online classes now, because that seems to be what it is. And, you know, people ask me if I want to do something. I, I always get stuck as the mom. <laughs> I have a lot of mom roles. So, which is fine. I'm, I'll be 46 in a couple weeks. I have no problem with my voice. I'm all about, you know, being young and, just you are who you are, no matter what age you are. I, you know, support that. And being a mom, it doesn't really matter what the age is. You know, I could almost be the grandma because <laughs> I technically am a grandma now. My wonderful daughter had a little girl. And that's brought my level of um, wanting to travel even more because she's all the way on the East Coast. So I'm hoping, you know, I get some more work. Halifax would be great to go back to and work there there's some really good shows there okay. and toronto i have a lot of people wanting me to come visit toronto made films with different people uh, angela and, and frank crusoe we were we were hanging out um making a film this this fall and they've invited me to go to toronto and uh, who wouldn't want to go hang out on the beach and chat about another film that i wanted to make so i'll do that and uh definitely be in halifax it would be nice to travel to the States. That's my next goal. I have my passport. Uh, I can easily get to Vancouver. I used to live in Vancouver, so it wouldn't be hard to uh, just drive down there and have somewhere to stay. So working elsewhere is another big goal. So it's been a busy five years. This last couple of years is was slow from COVID, but I did yeah. the networking. I, I jumped on Clubhouse. I jumped on Clubhouse and I met so many people that are in the film industry, uh, voiceover people. That's how I found Mark Redfield for my audio book that I'm a witch and I cackle. Uh, Frankenstein Mobster. Which, on Clubhouse. Since you've already mentioned it, I'll just bring up the poster real quick and then we can continue chatting on it just so people can get an idea and maybe you can discuss a bit more of what you do with your cackle in the, in the audio book. Yeah, she's a witch. Um, she's not... Uh, doesn't show up until the later on in the book. Um, well, the story. She uh, she's kidnapping people, and it's basically a mobster and Frankenstein mixed together. So Frankenstein, I'm the witch. There's other characters that are more like Frankenstein characters, and uh, I don't want to give it away. Just the characters aren't human, so it makes it a bit different. So I like okay. being the witch. That's all I can say. I, I'm just thrilled my, my my cackles on there. It's it's just also available as a USB. He's got it on this little. It looks like a tape deck from 
you know, our years. <laughs> and it has a US, USB that pops out. And it's also on all the streaming services too. But Mark okay. Redfield, he, he has a, a Facebook group and you can find it anywhere when you Google his name. Okay. So the usual is like Spotify and things like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and was, was that a more recent thing that you did then? Or Yeah, it was a couple of years now. Okay. So then when, when Clubhouse came out, I just met a couple people. They invited me to voiceover room, and I had lots of people reach out. I ended up doing um, table table reads with Wreck-It Ralph. The, the voiceover really blew up. I just met more and more people. I found someone that sounds like Ralph. So when I we had to do it, and now I have another friend that sounds like the the little the real glitch, the bad guy. So <laughs> we're gonna do something about the racetrack scene in the future. So Vanellope is not definitely gonna come back. Um, but the voiceover is more. I'm looking forward to doing something with Mark that's got to do with vampires, and apparently in London. So I I'm gonna learn an accent. Not just Ooh. to be a Canadian. A British accent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice, we'll nice. <laughs> do, you, do you feel you could do one now? I've or... moved around with them, but, you know, yeah. I really look forward to getting the script and working it with my coaches. Because that's yeah. another thing, uh, Clubhouse. There's voiceover classes and coaches you can reach out to. It's been great. So I just have to go and reach out. Even Mark, like, I have a question. But I have a few coaches that I go to now and... We'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. I know, yeah, you, like you, you definitely mentioned Clubhouse quite a bit. And I know you've invited me to that as well, um, which I, my <laughs> question to you, honestly, like you're you're involved in so many different media outlets. I just don't know how you have time for it. Like I, I barely have time for the three that I use on a consistent basis. Well, I don't work full time as a psychiatric aid anymore. So that would be it makes a big difference. I, I loved my job. At, at, it was the psych hospital in Edmonton. And I help people get up. Some people can't. And, you know, we'll just talk from the doorway or whatever for the day, check in. But I really miss helping people. So I got online and supported people online. Okay. Yeah. I really miss it. Uh, I physically can't do the job anymore. I fell and WCB and my old prior accidents when I was 16. And, you know, I guess I have a few things in my body that don't make me very healthy. So I have another, I have a surgery coming up that that's really going to stop me. I, I'm going to be laid up for weeks. So I don't really want to jump into anything right now. I, and I, I don't even know if I could handle anything full time anymore, to be honest, because uh, it's too painful. I live with chronic pain. So I do a lot of comedy with little clips. That's why everything's very quick and short because I'll be sitting too long and I get sciatic pain down my legs and in my back. So I, I do a lot of comedy and I stand up and I like playing in front of the camera. That's why I liked acting because, you know, uh, it could be worked around. You're always waiting right. to film. And, you know, the, the indie people I work with, they know what, I can't run up the stairs. They won't make me run up the stairs. So they're, they're, they're great. They're great. And, you know, Edmonton's great for supporting everything. People with disabilities, there's a few of us. I have ADHD, among other mental health things that I'm not embarrassed to talk about. And we talk about all the time on set. Good mental health is always important on set and just in general. So uh, as a PA, I'm always talking about that, you know, I'm a, I'm a mother. So my roles that I'm giving, given, then it's true. They, they really do give me those mother roles because I, I, I am motherly. Other than a couple films that I've come up with in the last couple of years. And I'm not very motherly at all. <laughs> I actually made my little dog pee on the floor when I was practicing in the basement with Alan. Um, that's, uh, I'm talking about good arson. Alan Wilson asked me to be the mother and I'm yelling. So it's not something anybody's used to. So I'm kind of excited because, you know, I'm always the bubbly and the my squeaky voice. And, you know, this one's a serious one. So I'm looking forward to people seeing the other side of me. A bit of a 
was it a bit of a challenge for you to no it challenge? was fun no yeah no it was okay. fun it was fun uh i'm just not that type of person but i can definitely get my feelings out that way if i need to right i just know yep. good coping skills and how to communicate nursing school nursing school really helped me nursing school taught me how to communicate so i took my acting classes that i learned as a teenager went into nursing school and learned how to communicate, stayed in mental health. I used to work at gun center before they closed it. It was called McCullough Center before it ended. They closed it. I really hope they're, I heard they might be opening it again. I can't work there, but I would definitely support anybody that needs the help. Like they just go to the Hope Mission in Edmonton and, you know, they help you get where you need to go. And that was one of the great places that I got to help like people get on their feet. So I do that. I just do everything online now. Right. You know, it, it, that's why I have the time. But I wish I did have a paying job. Of course. Yeah. Uh, well, the voiceover fair. is great. Uh, it's building and building. It's very exciting. Same with the acting. The, the roles are getting more and more lines, uh, which is thrilling. Starting out just background so many years ago. And now I actually have people writing scripts and, and adding me into their scripts. Thank you, Brandon and uh, Julie. Uh, grotesque is what I'm talking about, where I play Nina. It, Nina didn't have a lot of lines in the beginning and, you know, things evolved with Nina and now you get to see Nina a few times in Grotesque. And the nice girl, <laughs> the naive girl, not the mean one. So right. that's the other example of my, my range, I have a lot of range and it's a lot of fun. You know, I played with my kids. Uh, I think that's a lot to do with like acting. We did acting when we were kids. We pretended. Sure. We pretended. So I I played with kids and, you know, in mental health, I went and worked uh, in, I went to Dalhousie in Nova Scotia and we worked in the IWK in the autism clinic. I knew I was neurodiverse then. I was helping my kids get the help they needed to get started in school because they were just starting school. So I went into developmental psych, mental health psych, everything because of that. I knew I was neurodiverse. I wanted to help parents get like quick, quick results, quicker results, because that's really what is important. So okay. I do everything from home. I advocate for all that kind of stuff. And uh, I guess I'm everybody's cheerleader. Um, well, and, and again, going back to like your comments about the mental health and your history with that, and you know, you're you're actually looking as well to start a podcast based on that as well, right? Yes, yeah. I I don't want people to feel that stigma anymore. It, yeah, it's silly. Mental health is just as important as gut health. There's no difference. It's just been stigmatized throughout the last generations to be not talked about. And now it should be talked about. I'm very happy that, that these new generations are getting better. But some of them aren't. And some of them are getting more angry. And more bad things are happening in everyone's community. So, you know, I hope if I have a podcast and share, I can influence some people to, you know, not get angry go find out why they're angry and that's because anger is what the that emotion comes out if you don't know how to cope you'll feel anger and sadness you cope through it i loved the nursing program in nova scotia it was great for dalhousie the mental health i went to the forensic nursing i got to work on the psych unit there so forensic nursing was the my goal so when i got to edmonton it was easy I worked at the, the psychiatric hospital and at gun center. They were perfect. Right. My basement behind me now is now my my office. I have a sound room and I I'm gonna be filming my own skits with my mom because mom lives with us. That's what I do a lot. I take my mom out and we do Tim Hortons because we're Canadian and we <laughs> love Tim Hortons. And we'll go for a drive. There's a great dog park. We haven't been able to visit a lot because it's been cold. But actually this week, I'm hoping to go with her. And, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time. She wants, she gives me ideas. 
we talk over ideas of what I could do on a video and she's all good with it too. She wants to like duet little songs with me. So we'll see what we come up with in the basement because it's getting all tidied up and, and built. Uh, but I won't promise anything for when it will come out. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and, and also you kind of gave some kudos to uh, another gentleman we've actually had on the show, which is uh, Brandon. Um, Grotesque is is another film. Like we'll get to more details on Skin and Marink, which has obviously had quite a bit of success. But so is Grotesque, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think that's kind of getting overshadowed right now by Skin and Marink. But um, yeah, Grotesque is, has actually done quite well, and um, you know is available on on a few different streaming services, I believe, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've watched it on TV. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Maybe we can, you, you know, if you, if you want to talk about that a little bit and what your, you know, a little more detail on what your role on was that and how fun that was. And <laughs> it's been a while. We started out with the grotesque trailer. I think it was four years ago. So we we only made the trailer. We used that to get more fundraising. Uh, I did. I got to help with the fundraising for the second one. Julie did some really cool fundraising for the first one, and then I wanted to help out with fundraising, so we did a. Uh, uh, Indiegogo, or I think that's what it was. Sorry, Brendan, I can't remember. I and mean, then I helped with the fundraising and I did marketing and, you know, talked it up. And we got enough money together to keep going. And we made the movie, the full feature, not just the trailer. So we ended up making, um, there was too much time between COVID happened. It made really things awkward. We had to redo some stuff and depending on um, when Elizabeth Chamberlain was able to come and film because she's not always in Edmonton. It took a little while. I'd say a couple of years. But we had a lot of fun. Uh, indie crews are re really uh, they're, they're, they're families. And you take care of each other, so you, you carpool and, you know, you. I feed them. That's a lot. <laughs> if I'm not being a PA, say, um, a second AD, I got to do that. Um, I did crafty, which is mostly what I do is a lot of crafty. I feed everybody. But I just wanted to learn everything. And Brandon let me do that with Grotesque. And then once the trailer was done he and Julie wrote in more for Nina because Nina didn't have a lot in the beginning. So uh, she really got an expanded role and we just uh, kept sharing the clips that we had. Brandon was great. We had lots of behind the scenes. There was a few of us taking pictures and uh, I just go through the computer and I use Canva, different apps apps on my phone are my favorite for the marketing now. I feel like I don't even use my computer for everything. I do for big editing, but that Canva is pretty handy. And that's been a couple of years since that was done. Okay. Now Grotesque 2 will come eventually. And, you know, I'll be fully behind that, supporting it, sharing it, helping raise money for it. Because, you know, I love the character of Mildred. You know, Elizabeth is a great actress and I want her to see her succeed because she's she's got everything. She can sing, she can dance. She, she, why not? I'm supporting the young youth, which sounds very aging of myself. But, you know, <laughs> when they're in their 20s and I'm in my 40s, at least I get to be the mom roles now. And, right. you know, that, that it really is what I like to do is help support people. So if I'm doing it, in a film in front of the camera or behind the camera or at home or feeding the homeless, you know, bringing out hot water when it's really, really cold to make tea. There's something nice to do. It's what I'm doing. And it's usually an indie film. Right. Which again, and you know, I've mentioned it numerous times on this show is uh, Alberta's got a great community for that. So um, yeah. Um, and, and the great thing is that, you know, as far apart as Calgary and Edmonton are in terms of time, right? Three, three and a half hour drive, whatever mm -hmm. it ends up being. There's still a ton of cross collaboration between the two cities. You know, oh, yeah. The NBC, yep. Um, yep. Which is great to see. And Union now. Yeah. We had a lot of Union stuff up here. We loved it. 
Edmonton team was thrilled to help work on different. We were on Dark Match. Uh, there was a lot of us on Dark Match. Uh, I was in the, a few scenes as a background just because I, I wanted to go and uh, support my friends that were working so hard putting this together. So whether it was traveling to Calgary, which I haven't done a lot, just because uh, COVID and the press of gas is outrageous, I uh, did a lot in Edmonton, either in person or, like I said, on the computer. Okay, yeah. Uh, another thing I, I kind of wanted to touch on, because earlier you were talking about your networking and everything you kind of did during COVID. And uh, you, before the show, you kind of told me an interesting little stat. You and I are part of the same group. Um, of course, now the name is escaping me, Collaborators Group, I think. Um, of uh, which My mentorship group. Yeah. And they, yeah, well, so I think the Collaborators is kind of the generic version, and then they've got their different groups like you yes, said the mastermind group the mastermind so we have the group, entertainment like collaborators yeah yes, entertainment, entertainment collaborators group. with tina imahara and yeah. it's a large group that i've invited many many old burtons and canadians to and now i know people worldwide we also have another group where it's more individualized mentorship with tina and other people in the industry in the the other group the mastermind group you can get one-on-one -on -one help with scripts or whatever idea you need to chat about there's yeah. a lot of support so it's been a few years of that uh, really enjoying watching people make films in their own countries we made a film in our group with the mastermind group all away in our own homes during covid it's called the pill I really should have got you that link too uh, it was the, i didn't get to do a lot i did i did some table reads it's it was in europe it's yeah. beautiful it, it was it's beautiful so it's winning some awards it's in the theaters right now or like going through the festivals right now and it's doing well yeah and that's about it's about mental health too actually and fun, funny enough like there there's a few people involved in that project that i've been wanting to get on the show to discuss the film because it was quite unique really in that it was such a global collaboration yeah and all done remotely and all this other kind of stuff that it's really kind of ingenious, really. It's great. Um, yeah. So it'd be good to get a bit more detail on that. Um, the, the stat that you told me earlier, though, um, because, of course, Tina is out of L.A. And, uh, you know, it's more of a, an American group. But you've got the record for bringing in the most people, which are from Alberta, <laughs> to, to the group. There's tons of Albertans in our mentorship group because I've met, worked with so many people in the last few years that I've invited more people to Tina's group than anybody else in the group. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's amazing. Um, which I do want to give a shout out to Tina because, um, like, like you said, she's been very supportive of everybody, really. Like, she's been very supportive of myself, even the show, what you've done. Um, yeah. Can't say enough yeah. about her. She's been great. No. She's great. So thank you, Tina. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tina. Um, <clears throat> let's let's touch a little bit on on. Well, we'll start with Skin and Marink. We'll get there. We'll, let's do that um, because, uh, and I was going to mention this in my intro is that uh, I, I don't. If somebody hasn't actually heard about the movie by now, they've been living under a rock. Yeah. Because it seems to be everywhere. <laughs> Even my wife, who really has nothing to do with any of the stuff I do or anything else, she's like, I just got an ad for this movie <laughs> on Skin and Marie. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, so, a little film out of Edmonton, um, which you were a part of, which is having huge success. Uh, like, it, I don't think anybody in the production, on any production, when they have this kind of success, expects this kind of success no. No. Um, so i just kind of want to get your thoughts and and see what kind of uh repercussion not repercussion but what kind of what you've experienced after this effect if any oh definitely people are looking at my imdb my imdb moved uh from um, almost one hundred and fifty thousand uh down to nineteen thousand. okay <laughs> within a couple weeks when it got loose because it got loose in in a festival an online festival and it was put on tiktok 
So that's where people first started finding it and it got viral. About three weeks happened and you know, Kyle was stressed. And they had already had certain things worked out with Kyle or Kyle worked out things with the like shutter and stuff before. We, we just got more and more opportunities as things had grown online. Right. So, and I didn't share a lot when it was out because I didn't want people to go look for it. I was the one going through YouTube and deleting you if you had, you put my movie up there because I wanted to scare you in theaters and not have you do it on YouTube. So <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time supporting Skin and Marink in the beginning just by protecting it. And now that it's out, I'm I'm supporting making videos, uh, sharing, using Canva. Um, I really like doing reels and stories on Instagram, Facebook, anything really. Like you, you said, I've, I've signed up for a lot of different social media. I really like Instagram and Facebook for the most part. I, I do go on the other ones. I'm working on it. Uh, right. I do plan on doing TikTok videos. That's a lot of the ADHD podcast TikTok videos that I will do. Right. So, okay. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Skin and Ink was, uh, it was about a mental health kind of uh, idea. And it made me think of a fear. Um, so when he talked about it being uh, something scary for these children, you know, there's so many theories about what is scaring them. And there's different things in the house. So I was really intrigued on the, on the, the story. It was more like a, a outline. I don't remember a big, big script, but it was all outlined about what, how we were going to do it. Um, Jamie and McCray and Kyle had planned out where they were going to have the camera. And I didn't spend a long, like a lot of time on set because it didn't need to. I was there for for one day and we filmed mostly the bedroom um, spot where I sit in the picture. You see me in the picture. Uh, that was the longest filming because they just got to move the camera all the time. I just sat there. But uh, when I got to actually do like the the 45 second movements that I have where I'm being really eerie and then in the film, that was a lot of fun because uh, I kind of knew you know, what my character was kind of doing. And right. uh, I knew that I was kind of disappearing and different things that happened in the movie um, made it more fun and kind of scary. Cause you know, I grew up in the eighties with in the dark and I was scared. I, I was scared of the dark and I didn't like all those sounds. So this film, it, it pulled me in cause I wanted to do the same kind of thing. I like the scare actor thing. So why not make a film where I get to be someone that scares people or I'm just a mom. <laughs> <laughs> so have you really had many conversations with Kyle since it's kind of exploded or? <clears throat> Only a couple. He's like um, super busy. I'm sure right he's now. So busy with the different interviews. There's so many. He's, he's, he's lost count. It's yeah. overwhelming. When I saw him, we saw each other on the 13th at the Metro Cinema at our opening. And we were all up on stage. And I got to catch up with him quickly. But he's been so busy talking to so many different people. He's very exhausted. It's, anxiety is a normal reaction. But when you get overwhelmed, you know, I can't imagine what he's going through. I have my own anxieties. I love talking, though. So that's not one of my problems. Kyle's shy. He's Kyle's a great guy that's just uh, pure in what he wanted to show. And he was able right. to tell everybody on the set, like Jamie knew exactly what kind of looks that he was looking for because he communicated that. So making the movie was quite easy with everyone because we worked well together. They were known to me before because they all were students. I helped it, Nate. And, you know, my name came up. So I became the mom. And right. then he, he asked if I knew someone that could be a dad and a child. And I found Ross. He was uh, a friend of mine I met when I made a movie. It was a school project for Christy Marchuk, um, The Turtles. Uh, 
it's a cute little clip that I did with Ross's sons, two sons, and it got her an A, which is okay. years back when I was volunteering and uh, she helped me get to Red Deer and, you know, we had a great time with the gas and stuff, but I wanted to do it just because, you know, school projects and it was a great drive. We have uh, a sports car that my hubby drove down. It was, so it's just worth it in that one and meeting Ross in person and getting to know everybody else. Christy's doing great. She's working in union stuff now. So I've still worked with her. You know, the networking is great. Now I asked Ross to bring his little boy, Lucas, on to skin a ring. And that's how Kyle met little Lucas. And gotcha. Ross is the dad. So the little boy and the dad on the movie are, are really dad and son. Nice. But sometimes that makes it easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> especially when they're four. Lucas was yeah. quite young. So he like he was still saying turtles with the cutest little like slang. Uh, right. If you did hear him speaking, you do hear him a lot, but it's kind of whispering. Yeah. But, you know, you can tell he's like six or seven years old. Um, but he's supposed to play a four year old, but he's a tiny little guy. And his sister, Emma, brought Dahlia and, you know, she's doing great. She's having fun. But she I believe she wants to be a dentist if she's not going to be an actress. Okay. So I promote both. But, you know, I'll help those kids. Definitely. I, I see sparks in their eyes and I, you know, they're naturals. So if I can make movies later with my end Edmonton kids, Ross is in uh, Red Deer with them, but you know, Alberta, we yeah. travel around to help each other. Yep. Besides, sure. we're going to have a cool train one day where I'll get to jump into that, That's that right, the bullet pube. train and come yep. see you in an hour or something. Yes. So, then yeah, I'll be exactly. working down in Calgary lots. Right. Definitely. <laughs> yep. Well, that's my plan. I would, I, I would really like to be in Calgary more this year. It's just the gasoline cost oh. is, is killing me, and I just don't want to pay it. <laughs> so yep. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, for sure. So with the film, um, there's definitely two sides to the reviews. Um, there's a lot of people that loved it, that kind of thing. There's some negativity to it as well. Do you? tend to read reviews or what are your oh, thoughts yeah, on reviews? I've been reading lots, sharing lots. Uh, I like reading the theories. There's some really good articles that have different theories and, and not just a few sentences. And these guys have put in paragraphs of how they feel about different, like the camera, the lighting. It's great. Roger Ebert gave us something like, ah! <laughs> that was exciting. So I, I've been watching them all. It's been uh, shocking to see some of the responses. I didn't know it was going to be the scariest thing ever. Um, and it was scary when it, it was a given. Right. Uh, I didn't realize people would be that scared of me sitting on a bed. But when he put the sound into it, you know, and when you're in the theater, it, it sounds great because you can pay attention to it. If you can't pay attention, you're going to have a hard time watching the movie because it's slow and you you really look into what's in the screen. You can't see a lot, but if you actually wear glasses, I didn't wear my glasses the first viewing and I didn't really get to see as much on, on the big screen, but I know where I am in the dark. So right. you guys, the movie is either boring for some or really exciting for others. And, you know, I don't, blame anyone for not liking it or liking it because it's not everybody's cup of tea it does scare you i got scared i scared myself yeah <laughs> even when i knew it was coming so there's there's uh, an atmosphere that you fall into you know you feel really like a kid when you're creeping down the hallway and you know there was like these creepy noises or if you had a pet and you would hear a noise but you hear more than that in this movie you hear dad voice and my voice but our voices are altered exactly to kind of give that ominous tone to it yeah, yeah. they they one article said something about they hear a childlike voice like beckoning them it made me giggle because i guess i i do sound like a kid 
and that was my voice so thank you <laughs> very youthful yeah so any of the female sounding is me and ross is the other one and then the kids uh worked with kyle for a long time just recording different things and i, I wasn't there when ross and dahlia and emma and lucas got together and did all that so when the movie came together it was nice to see it and then get to see everybody again at the premiere that was the first time i'd met dahlia because when you're on set you don't always work the same days right yeah totally right yeah. so it took some time and and kyle took his time editing he had to cut a lot out he had some really cool angles there was really cool scary stuff in there that he had to cut out because it was long and that, it is long already and people are kind of disappointed about that some some aren't you know but it may be a little bit long, maybe another 10 minutes or it, it could have been a bit shorter, but then you're, you're missing out on, on what he was really trying to get to the point because it is the underlying little theories that are correct. Well, I think, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but my interpretation of what he was trying to do was to um, almost let then that's why I think people have different theories is it lets you as a person visualize what you want to or, or feel and see what you want to see, which is what happens in people's dreams and things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's different for everybody. Um, I, I think that's where he's kind of tapped into, to that unknown with people. Yeah. It's like a dream. Yeah. It's like one of the kids in a dream. Are both the kids in a dream the perspectives change so you don't really know uh which perspective it is all the time usually it's lucas uh but you only see their feet or their legs and yeah. often they whisper there are loud noises that can happen um i always watch your ears especially if we're watching at home with like a headset on which i you know i recommend so you could hear things there's there's writing on the screen but you know, it's best to hear stuff because uh, they whisper and right. to follow along but it's just easier to hear you know what they're talking about it gives the best idea it's not a full plot there's the plot was an idea <laughs> and it's an atmosphere it's a dream and there's something evil there that does stuff right. to the doors and windows so we all just got together talked about that and kyle cut it up and put it together and skin and ring happened and nobody thought anything was going to happen. It did good in theater, in the festivals and it went best feature um, at the Toronto fear festival, I believe. Uh, sorry if I said the wrong one, but uh, it, it shocked us. I was thrilled. That's when the marketing started for me because right. I'm so proud it was in the festivals. But then it went to Europe and it went to Spain and it went to a film festival and it got leaked. So that's, uh, it was the summertime, I think. Okay. And I didn't want anybody to know just yet because, you know, I'm in the movie, but I don't want anybody to go and find it online. I was hoping, you know, I could slow people down. So I was the one on YouTube always deleting whoever had uploaded it illegally and, you know, talking to people about what it is and preparing them for when it comes out, not talking to the wrong people who will put it in the wrong places. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and again, like, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the show for, for me, myself, um, I definitely wasn't one of the people that was scared by it. Um, but I, I, as I mentioned before, there was a gentleman in the fr front row in front of me and a couple over and, it definitely had the effect on him because he was just like this the entire movie and my phone at one point probably about two-thirds three-quarter way through the movie um i forgot to turn the ringer off when somebody <gasps> called and the the look i got from this gentleman i i was actually that that was my scary moment yeah yeah like which i don't blame him because be i'm usually pretty good about that but i forgot this time <laughs> but but the fact that I interrupted his immersion in the movie was just like nobody. Yeah, some people are very, very uh, in depth with films, and some don't look as uh, 
deep into the films. Uh, this is my little Toki. He decided to come see us. <laughs> uh, he, he's on set too once in a while when I'm dropping off food if I was catering. And my mom, she would always hang out with Toki. So he's down here um, being my cheerleader, uh, keeping me going, waking me up. You know, that's why I'm up early. I do my marketing in the morning usually because it's dark and cold now in the winter. So the spring will be more outside, you know, there's filming coming in June for another film, uh, a part two that will be fun to go into. And, you know, there's been different people contacting me already with different scripts they want me to read and uh, work with them for different roles and figure out which role would best suit me and evolve it with them. So that was just when skin and rank come out so it's only been a month of like them talking about it and then it only came out on the 13th so this last week is quite busy especially with podcasts and and more interviews which i don't mind I, i'm i'm not shy about chatting and the adhd makes it really easy for me to do so i'm i'm a big uh advocate for helping out with the the films we do and i don't mind and so how many movies do you feel you've done PA on so far? I think it was seven of them. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's quite a few. Uh, the Hive, um, Grotesque, Hotbox. Uh, there's a couple more. Um, some of them are out, some of them aren't. Depends on what year I made them. Uh, most of them are on IMDb. When it comes to something small, you know, uh, just one day things it's a, it's easier i i love making uh something home cook and my mom would help me in the beginning it's it's gotten harder since covid but we were making like stews and shepherd's pie and um just different meals for everybody that, that were home cooked so right. people just kept asking for us to come cater and be pas so i do that a lot I actually have a friend, Daryl's my friend, helping me out now. He's my assistant for catering. Thank you, Daryl. He's also learning how to do all everything under Brandon and Julie. Thank you to them, showing him how to be a great PA because I'm moving on to bigger and better things. And I I don't have the time for so much. So I, I'm helping my friends get involved in the indie set. And I'm moving on to working as a union PA because I have, I'm a permittee now and I would love to go down and, and work on a union set. So we'll see where that takes me now that COVID's slowing down and uh, right. I'll be coming down. I, I look forward to being a PA, hopefully uh, something on set, but I do like office work too, you know, but I really like being on set. Yes. I'm the same way. I'd rather be in front of the camera than behind it, but you know, that's okay. I'll do both. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're kind of creeping up on the hour mark here, so um, we'll wrap it up in about 10 minutes here. So, But I'm kind of curious. Uh, like I said in, in my intro, you've kind of had a decent amount of success in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of wondering what you would contribute or what do you feel contributed most to that success that you've experienced so far? Feedback from each film I was in to myself and then to others that were with me and people who asked how it was to work with me, it really started to just explode because I would work with somebody, get experiences, um, and then they would just tell people and that it was good to work with. And I just started building. There was probably about 20 credits on my IMDb before like five years, four years. Mm -hmm. um, and that's with COVID. So it was a little bit different, but I did a lot uh, for the last few years and uh, dipped my toes into everything. I, I'm very business-like too. So I would like to go into producing and uh, I have friends in Indy and now with Tina helping me out worldwide that I, I look forward to doing more films in the scripts that are written for me. So I have a couple scripts that are written and I'm looking forward to making them in Canada. And so I'm looking at funding and, and doing all that kind of stuff 
right now, okay. which is, it's, it's an interesting pastime, but you know, I would love to get another audition and go in front of the camera again. Yeah. I don't want to be a director, but I do ex definitely want to be a producer and be involved in a script that makes a difference, makes a point, advocates for something that's important to me. And uh, there's a few of them coming up. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fair. And when it, when it comes to the feedback portion that you were, you were talking about, do you seek that, that those no. comments? It was just great to have. We usually, nowadays, when you're doing filming, there's like a, a messenger group or we, we all communicate in some way. Well, the indie group that I worked with when we made Good Arson was wonderful and very supportive. And the feedback was amazing. And Alan gave me the most amazing feedback. Uh, I, I posted it. It was a while back. It was so heartwarming because, you know, I really just did try and that was pain that I'd felt before. And when he said that I was able to bring it out, it, it was just really flattering. So doing that one even, because a lot of those people are in Calgary and Red Deer too. And meeting them, they talk to other people in different places in Alberta. And I've gone up to White Court for commercials now. And I've gone down south more for different little things. And most things are in Calgary or Edmonton that are bigger. Okay. And a little bit more of a fun question, I guess. Um, <clears throat> if there is... And it doesn't have to be an actor or anything like that, but somebody within the film industry. If there's one person you could work with, who would it be? Jean-Claude Van Damme. Because when right. I was a teenager, I was like this little karate kid in Army Cadets. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, And I was petite, so, you know, I protect myself. Yeah. So Jean-Claude Van Damme was, like, in the movies in the 90s. And, uh, you know, I heard he likes Skin of Marine. Oh, so, yeah? Wouldn't that you be really that? neat okay. to meet him? Yeah, little right. birdie told me that, that Jean Claude Van Damme liked Skinner Marink. So that's exciting to hear. Even even Megan, the movie Megan, put out something about our movie, and that was so flattering too because I can't wait to see Megan. Yeah, yeah, actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm wanting to see that one as well. So, um, um, it works. And horror is kind of your thing, right? Generally, yeah. Horror seems to be now. I, I really want to do more of a dramatic role or a serial killer or, you know, because I know I can emote the expressions and I know my voice may not sound uh, as uh, scary as some, but I think I could definitely play the character that's uh, not so nice. So I'm looking forward to that. I know that in Grotesque 2, uh, I'm going to be playing a role that's not like Nina. In grotesque one it's it's i'm not the same person i'm playing a different person so maybe i'll wear a wig or something we'll see what uh right. caitlin will be doing our wardrobe we'll see what she finds for me and i'm mean so i'm looking forward to seeing how mean i am yeah but yeah absolutely i have to be mean to mildred but it'll be a fun movie no matter what yeah for sure um no I, and I know I talked to Brandon about the the sequel there when he was on on the show as well. Um, I don't know. I, I, even when he was talking about, it, I'm like, oh, it already sounds like it's going to be a fun time. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it always was. There's a really good team. Brandon has a, a large team that works together a lot for yeah. many years now. So it's been a building, building grotesque for a while, you know. And that's why I love promoting it. Nina was uh, a a wonderful naive little lady. <laughs> right yes where this will be quite the opposite quite quite um which is always nice i i find if you can get that contrast in in, a, in characters right yes um funny enough like i tend to get i don't want to say pigeonhole but i the characters i seem to to land into are kind of the meaner roles if you will mm -hmm. bad guy kind of deal um, but then i've also been told that I'm actually pretty funny, so I could do comedy. <laughs> and I'm like, never saw that, but um, comedy's hard. Actually. Well, it it is absolutely. Um, but I, I think what I've been told is basically just I have this 
presence, I guess, when it comes to the comedy portion. It's not even that my timing is that great or anything like that, or I'm over the top funny. It's just my mannerisms, I guess, are funny. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. so, I'm just funny looking is what they're trying to tell oh, me. Oh, I, yeah. I think. It's all good to be quirky. <laughs> I am definitely quirky. Somebody will ask me about myself. I'm petite. I'm quirky. I sound like a 12-year-old. Uh, I love dogs. Clearly, I have a little Pomeranian. And um, I'm all about helping and assisting people anywhere in this world. Uh, ideally, I help everybody close to me with mental health and just there's homelessness and, and people starving out here. So I'm always uh, promoting stuff that's um, not uh, film related if I'm not doing film. But I certainly look forward to being much busier this year. It's, it's uh, filling up my planner. So it's exciting, but I hope there's another really good evil lead. And, you know, I've already spoken to my, my writer friend that's written the other script for me, how we're going to evolve another evil lead film. And, but that's another few years away. So <laughs> still, yeah, that's, that's all good. Idea. I like planning it. Yeah. And evolving the script. Like, I just love being involved in all that part and, and making the characters and, Finding local characters who are great actors around Edmonton and Alberta, which I I could picture them already for the audition. So I have a good idea of who's almost in the film already. <laughs> okay. And my friends are from the States, so they're wondering, they don't know everybody from, from the States to here. If, you're, if they're in my group, they would, but there'll be some people that they'll be quite surprised to see and you know, it, it's going to be fun to to bring people from the States to film up here because they had a good time before and they want to come back. So why not offer them a role that they would kick butt in? And then I get to co-star with them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, yeah. On that note, I think we're, we're pretty much at that one hour mark. So um, I think we'll kind of wrap it up here. I want to thank you so much for finally being able to sit down with me and uh you know, being able to talk about your stuff. You're and, welcome. Uh, yeah, and we'll, I know we'll be seeing you on the on the screen here again soon enough. And uh, um, sorry, did you say when they might be finishing up Grotesque Two? I know they haven't even started yet, but no, or... we don't start filming until like June. Start well, June. Okay. they don't start filming till June. I'll help out when I can. Uh, they already know yeah. that I'm. I've got some stuff on my plate, but. You know, I'm definitely always there to, you know, drop someone off or, you know, I have some friends that love to work with them, but that don't have cars. So right, they'll see me. And it's sometime in June for some of the like big pieces. And then I'll be different days throughout June on the script. So I don't know how busy I'll be for June, but it sounds like it's getting busy. The other scripts, they're starting up soon. So We'll see what we do with those two scripts I have with some indie friends. And then I've had a couple producers bring scripts to me and want me to work with some local actors here. And I'm looking forward to that because I've never done so much as a, or like a, a uniform type position. So I'm looking forward to having a, that kind of role too. Perfect. Perfect way to end the show. So thank you so much. And uh, for everybody else, um, this, again, is not a, a live show, but uh, just to preempt to you for the upcoming fifth season, we are going to go through some changes. We're going to be in a different location. Um, we're actually going to be in a location where we can actually accommodate in-person interviews again, like we did in season one. So that'll be lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, so stay tuned for some upcoming information on that. Um, season five is tentatively scheduled for mid-march so keep your eyes posted for that and once again please don't forget to subscribe love your support thank you so much everybody have a great uh couple months until next season